this warrior is. Uh, it does seem to be at least mid-range at its at the very least, because I would be very surprised if it was full-on aggressive mech warrior with execute and lich king in there. Um, but you know, warrior has not had a fairly aggressive deck since the days of pirate warrior, uh, before even this entire rotation year of the year of the raven. So I'm looking forward to see what America's got in store for us. Well, I like all of these cards. Blood is really good, Execute's really good, Lich King is really good, and Giggling Inventor's really good. Now, whether you want them all on turn one, another story. But. Yeah, against Rogue, nonetheless, where you play Lich King, they Vile Spine Slayer, and yeah, you really have to pick up the pieces from that point on. So the thing, the thing to note is that it, it is against uh, Pogo Hopper Rogue, and so your game plan probably shifts Oof. if that's the case. You know, Blood Razor, I would say, is one of the key cards in Warrior, but against Pogo Hopper Rogue, your opponent's not really swarming the board. They might not even have a minion out on turn three. You know, Blood Razor not looking the strongest in that situation. Yeah. And the thing about the Pogo Hopper is that unless you have infinite removal through Dead Man's Hand and shuffling in executes and brawls, Ooh. how do you keep up with this increasingly powerful board with Pogo Hoppers and Lab Recruiter synergy? Well, that's a great question. Pogo Hopper, a two mana one one rogue mech that gets plus two plus two for each Pogo Hopper you have previously played. Right. And of course you keep shuffling more in with lab recruiters. And then you can lab recruiter your lab recruiter. So essentially you have three extra pogo hoppers to be extra lab recruiter. And you guys get it from that point on. You can effectively go infinite resources. And Pogo Hopper, unlike Jade's don't have a cap on their stats. They can go, you know, to the thousands of attacks and health. Uh, no dog, I heard you like lab recruiters. <laughs> and, you know, Mimic Pod picking up lab recruiter all but ensures that, you know, Dahoni and Team Korea will have infinite resources. Yep. Being able to shuffle three copies of a friendly minion back can do some uh, some very long-term disgusting so things. Yes. Options. Now, that being said, you know, if Pogo Hopper is towards the bottom half of the deck, then a lot of times this rogue deck can struggle, but that's why there are ways to offset that. Things like Elven Minstrel can uh, lean out the deck, but let's say you don't have Pogo Hopper. There are alternative ways to win. I've seen people hold out through just giggling inventors and just pressuring through having, you know, four power on board and having an infinite sources of damage. Yeah, I think that's going to be part of the game plan here for uh, for Trump and Team USA. It's, uh, you're going to want to get some minions on board. You're going to want to chip away left. I think that's really the way that you could keep Dione and Korea from just going nuts and doing whatever they want. It's being right. able to just keep them in some sort of pressure check. Doesn't really matter how ragtag the crew is. Enough damage eventually kills a rogue. Yeah, and I think uh, Korea is thinking about whether or not they want to challenge this uh, acolyte or perhaps even return it to the hand. Uh, very tricky scenario because you obviously don't want Warrior to draw the cards because their only way to beat you is to draw cards. But are you perhaps wasting some of your better removal tools? Because we don't know what warrior deck this is. Right. I mean, this this could be any number of things from this stage. Right. And Blood Razor is actively so on your mind. And that, that's like one of the key warrior cards is Blood Razor. Right. But you can see that uh, Trump and crew even threw away the Blood Razor because they just want other cards to to have at the early stage of the game. Acolyte pretty darn important. Yeah. I do want to talk about Weapons Project. I actually really like this card for many reasons. Um, partially because it acts as weapon removal and also weapon guarantee. So what you, what you can do with Weapons Project, which is a two-mana spell that says both players equip a 2-3 weapon and gain six armor. So that when you force your opponent to equip a weapon, you can override their legendary weapon, for example. So yep. Warlocks have Skull of the Minari, or Druids have Twig of the World Tree. Aloneth. Aloneth. You can just force remove it straight up. And yeah, they do get six damage, but you get six armor into the day. But then also, if you play cards like Harrison Jones, you can guarantee value off of that in the late stages of the game. So Harrison Jones can act as a superpower ancient of lore to just draw you cards for seven mana. Yep. And it's uh, you know really insane... Uh, if you're a warrior deck that struggles on card draw in the late stages. Yeah, oftentimes your opponent gaining the armor isn't really uh, an important effect, I would say. And so days. being able to to just, you know, have a weapon early on or to be able to override key points of weapons is a big deal. Yes. All right, well, Dahini kind of given up the fact that his opponent will have uh, a way to draw cards with his Acolyte. 
not want to burn or shadow Ooh. step just to deny one card. It is a dead man's hand. Well, it, oh. we don't know if it's full on dead man's hand right. yet. It could be one copy. And if we see, say, gather your party, then that all but ensures that it's just a simple recruit warrior that has a lot of the mech packages from um, the Boomsday. So, so my my bet would be on the Boom ship, right? Nine mana. Right. Put three minions from your hand into play. They gain rush. With Dry Gulch Jail, I'm sorry, not Dry Gulch Jailer. Dry Gulch, um, Dry Whisker Armor. Why can't I see, remember the name oh of this God. card? With the, I was following your logic. I was like, yeah, the Jailer. All right, so we get Silverhand Recruits in our hand. <laughs> the, with the two mana, two, two armor guy and Acolyte of Pain, recruiting, not necessarily the best option. However, you know, maybe you can do some stuff like use these just to gain armor and gain life. And you're not playing Recruit Package, but you are playing Booms, uh, the Boom Ship. And right. so it's to it's to be able to gather well multiple charge minions in hand and then deliver one lethal blow. With that. Yeah, you have Garage Hell Scream, Charge Devil Sword, Charge Devil Sword. Uh, there's a lot going I want on. You. I and there's a lot going on here. That's a lot of pogo hoppers getting added. I want you. Yeah, and like you. a lot of pogo hoppers. That's six pogo hoppers on top of the one that's already in the deck. So seven total, which brings us to. Uh, Know, at least 15-15, <laughs> potentially higher. And then what becomes scary is the idea that you have lab recruiters on the board, so when you combine Vanish and you combine Shadow Steps, yeah, Rogue's going to get some really big minions, but you do have Dead Man's Hand and a lot of removal tools. What now? Looks like Trump and crew were originally thinking about removing the board. Yeah, buckle in is the, the basics of this one. We're yeah. in for quite a long game. This could be... A long game. It also could be a fast one if Warrior just ends up sputtering out. Part of the, the, the challenge with Dead Man's Hand Warrior is to balance your hand economy, plus uh, how often you can draw, plus all the removal and what you shuffle into the deck. People have often said that Dead Man's Hand Warrior has been one of the hardest decks to play in Hearthstone. Yeah. Um, in Hearthstone history, it gives so much to account for. You know, how do I, what do I shuffle my deck? What's the probability of me drawing a specific yeah. thing? Now, the reward is not necessarily indicative of the decision tree difficulty. Yeah, um, I feel like its power level is relatively low given how difficult it is. Right, and, but to me, that's just what makes it all the more impressive. Right. And people have won tour stops with this exact oh, deck back in uh, February. Uh, I remember Odemian was cleaning house with it. And you know, a, oh my god, the pogo hoppers are getting gray. Yes, and the Elven Minstrel is just also a, a key linchpin for this entire deck because it fishes out specific minions, and if you only shuffle Pogo Hoppers in, um, you know, one of the many reasons why I'm not exactly sure if I'm a huge fan of the Faldori Striders uh, version that mixes both, per se. No. But I do understand the logic of it. You just want to have really good early game plays, especially if it's fairly aggressive. It's like an alternate win. Yeah, you, yeah. Know, some, you don't have to all in on the Pogos. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can build a deck around something and still be able to win in another way. I mean, right. that, that's often just wise. Like, for instance, I would love to Stormbringer everyone with my Shaman deck and only kill them with random legendary minions, yeah. but if I only do that, then I'd probably just lose to a lot of aggressive decks. True. Here's the problem with uh, Dead Man's Hand Warrior from my perspective. It's the fact that, oh, okay, it looks like they're not going to value that infinite game plan. And I, and I agree, because I don't think it's actually a sustainable game plan long term. The opponent, if they catch wind of it, can easily just answer you back with more infinite. Well, I'm just kind of curious about the Dead Man's Hand like in general in this spot. Are they just going right. for like an overwhelming amount of pull? I mean, the, the lab recruiter was mimic potted, so the idea of, uh, you know, pseudo infinite resources for Diamond crew is still very much a real possibility. Well, I mean, that's a really good point. And then the follow up question is, you know, how do they actually win? Well, I'm guessing Omega Assembly probably has some plans here. Like, right. for instance, never casting it before turn 10. <sighs> That's another problem, too. Hand space. If you play Lich King, you burn another card. If it's your boom ship, for example, that might be it. I love the way that works. Yeah, with the little cog wheel. Or, I feel like I'm a mini saw. I feel like I'm a mini saw. So the Gingling Inventor just trying to stall. Oh, Valera, oh. the hollow picked up. So if, if Diony and, and Kareem plays this, they will burn a card next turn, but they have like everything in their hand they need. The only card I think they would care about burning right now is the second Lab Recruiter. 
Ooh, that would be devastating. But, I mean, still win, I think, despite that. Yeah, I mean, you've added, you know, still cards to your deck. You've earned a Pogo Hopper. You don't really care that much in this spot. You, you have plenty of other stuff. So, Labracruder, I think, is the only burn of consequence left in the deck. Uh, but I think they're at eight cards, so I think they're okay. Did they play another card? No, I think, uh... Clear that Hollow is the ninth card. Did I just count the hand wrong? Yeah, I, yeah, I just counted the hand wrong. My something, apologies. Something that um, you yeah, should be aware of, though, is that the Shadow Reflection comes in first before yeah. you draw the card. What? So no. you will burn um, some really important cards. And I have done that fairly recently. When I played Malagos Rogue, I, I used a new Necrium Blade with um, the Cobalt Illusion to try to pull up Malagos for four mana uh, instead of nine. And maybe copy versions of it with like the Necrium File. Yeah. I burned my Malagos because it was like the it was like the last card that I drew. I feel like, oh, oops. You gotta be careful with these guys. <clears throat> so now that we're, that we're wide on the board, we're basically praying for our opponent not to have advantage in some capacity. And to make matters worse, our opponent's at 32 life, so. Yeah, you're also hoping they don't have like 90 yeah. million pogo hoppers. Well, if they do have 90 million pogo hoppers, we do have <laughs> What here's, is going on? Here's the big problem too. Like this is exactly what I was talking about. Where like I've seen these Pokemon rogues <laughs> win just through like infinite giggling inventors. Have you, it's not a laughing matter. You know that Annoyatron Twitter where it only tweets out hello. Yes. Have you I seen am, that? I am very aware of the novelty account, <laughs> where you know basically anytime you said anything like Annoyatron related, it would auto search. It, and but it's not it's not a you. bot though. Oh, it's not. If you can go look and it's somebody physically replying oh. to the cuz you can see the location thing or whatever. You can see what time it it's not a bot. Oh, that's cool. Cuz it goes inactive sometimes too. Huh. I thought it was a bot that auto replied. No, it's a person doing that. Whoever that uh. that's a very dedicated individual to annoy a trot. No. And I respect yes, that. That is a person with a lot of free time. <laughs> Is copy paste every single day. <laughs> Man, you use our war paths. We don't have our win condition. We have the Lich King, and the Lich King can steal stuff. So that is my that is my idea. And here's another thing too. That that life total that the rogue has might even be relevant. Let's assume that we even can get past these uh, armies of Anoya Trunks. Okay, Death and Decay helps that. All right, let, but let's assume we can even get past that. Do we even have enough damage to even have relevance to pressure the rogue at this point? Well, because we gave them six armor. You know what they say? Once you kill a bunch of Anoya Trons, there's nothing but giant pogo hoppers left. It's a classic saying. <laughs> oh my gosh, he can even just. Utilize Vile Spine Slayer with the Shadow Reflection. I mean, the, the hand efficiency is so good with the Leer of the Hollow. The fact that you can get so early on curve. I mean, I was looking for it when Trump was like, yeah, we have something special for the for the, the Warrior, but I think this is one of the worst matchups possible. It, it's looking like that. There's just not a lot of ways to efficiently take care of. Yeah. Of you know, Diane and crew drawing two cards a turn effectively. And it's not that they're just drawing two cards a turn, they're drawing copies of those cards. Right, they make pot every single turn. Now, the Omega Assembly is interesting because what could oh, come out of it? Oh, that helps. Magic. Well, that clears everything. Look at that little goblin bomb, too. Okay. Boom. Suit that up with a 3 8. That makes Boomship a lot worse. Get Vile Spined <laughs> instantaneously. Well, one Vile Spine was used. Which is nice to know, but it, it's not even necessarily the boss, but it's like vanish, right? They play a bunch of stuff in vanish. I wonder. I'm still looking at five pogo hoppers in hand, which is potentially ten pogo hoppers over the next five turns. <sighs> That's a lot of hop. I must choose. And I think it's gonna happen. What now? <laughs> You're a smart. Well, looks like they're going to be even more conservative. I think they're not exactly sure if they have the Pogo Hopper and they want the Dynomatic to be uh, reactive. No. It doesn't respond. It doesn't touch Pogo Hoppers, though. It does for Execute, so you can Dynomatic no, no, and Execute. No, it's, it's non-mech. Oh, you're right. It's non-mechs. So they're hoping that your opponent plays a non-mech minion. Yeah. Yeah. And this you know, is looking their rough. entire win condition are mechs. 
Death's shadow. I just stared at that animation of the pogo hopper. I'm like, where is he going? <laughs> Dionne is like thinking about how far does he want to extend, but I think the reality is if they just keep playing one card a turn with these Pogo Hopper threats, Warrior's just going to run out of cards. They don't have to extend that much further. Yes, it'd be awesome to play three Pogo Hoppers, ramp up your uh, minions, but just play one of those Pogo Hoppers per turn in the Shadow Reflection. You won't ever run out of, you won't run into hand space issues because you're playing two cards. And uh, your opponent just has to deal with a suffocating amount of pressure turn yeah. after turn. Suffocating is the right word there, because there is a reprieve on this immediate turn. But their trumpet crew are going to be in the exact same position on the following turn. Now, I do think that there is a way to win if Trump and crew can discover Mecha or Mega However, they is that just your plan. No, because they shuffled their entire hand into their deck. <laughs> they they shuffle nine extra cards. That's not how you win with Megathune. So if that was their plan, they uh, they definitely well, made it significantly this harder. This is the plan now. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're not playing Omega Assembly, even though they have this hand space issue uh, for it. I think that's maybe respect to vanish, perhaps. Because they would have nine cards total. Oh my gosh, they're so big. I'm gonna play an even larger bunny. <laughs> Oh, hey, card draw. So you can Ah, yes, just what we needed. I think we need to keep our resource count as high as possible, and I'm pretty sure that right now my plan to win is Mechathune through a Mega Assembly. <laughs> and that's not even that's like that's still what? a one percent chance to win, I think, There's in my 24 mind. Twenty-four attack already on board. Performing. I think you're done. Well, I think you're done goof by shuffling that hand in. Yeah, yeah that too. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> it's, you know, and all things considering, I, I can understand perhaps the logic of trying to shuffle cards into your deck. You want to have a lot of resources. You felt like your hand, you know, your hand was like fairly reasonable. But, you know, the, the Pogo Hover deck is so quick at ramping once they get the Death Knight up that it feels almost uh, you know, overwhelming. Like you just can't keep up with it whatsoever. The way that you beat Pogo Hoppers is you pressure them. And the way that you beat stuff like Control Warrior is you Pogo Hopper them. It's just a ton of stuff, turn after turn. Good luck. You are the control deck as the Pogo Hopper deck. You've turned right. their control deck into a bad aggro deck. How, how high do you think these Pogo Hoppers can jump? <laughs> right. Well, right now they're at 17 feet and counting. Uh, meters. We're trying to be uh, international. Okay, meters. Here. 17 meters and counting. Yeah. Look, would you rather face Death one building-sized pogo hopper or a hundred pogo hopper-sized buildings? Like, I don't know where I was going. Depends. With that. Did I shuffle nine, you know, weak cards in my deck Ooh. beforehand? It's something about like the chicken. <laughs> like the something sized chicken or a hundred chicken yeah, sized yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. That's the that's the pogo hopper. Thing. The horse and the ducks. Yeah. <laughs> you got this Harrison to help bail you out. And I think we're gonna find, you know, whether or not just not drawing the big cards that they need. This is the card you shuffled into your deck. Yeah, big yikes. What are we gonna do with this? Okay, uh Stonehill Defender, can it pick up anything else? Because we saw a couple of those taunt minions like Dihorn Hatchling and Tar but I just don't see a lot of ways out here. Neutral mechs picked up. Scorbomatic. You could kill the first Pogo Hopper. Okay, but you know they are putting reasonable pressure, and all things considering, you know you can put your opponent down to to 20 life. Here's the issue I'm seeing: is even at let's say they just get Diana crew down to like three, one Pogo Hopper and Zilliax is going to heal them to full. <laughs> Zilliax's Pogo Hopper will be actually more powerful than Reno Jackson. Zilliax is <laughs> Divine Shield, Taunt, Lifesteal, Rush, Magnetic, and Pogo Hopper is a mech. So you can attach Zilliax to a Pogo Hopper. And just, and just literally... Uh, so your opponent doesn't have a minion. Tw 21 attack! And, you know... I, for one, welcome our new Pogo Hopper. <laughs> It's just they're Stop adorable. shuffling stuff in your deck. I, I, I mean, it's okay. A six nine is great, but you know, not now. Like what? <laughs> what? I don't understand what we we have to do here. You know, sometimes it just bees that way. 
it's okay to just move on sometimes. That can that can happen. Part of the Boomsday Project flavor of the set, if you will, is when you know science goes too far. Well, this is way too far. <laughs> See, we've crossed that line. The line is a dot. For me, it's not far enough. I want more. <laughs> How do you make a dinosaur look small? Well, <laughs> this would be it. I'm just looking at that Scorpomatic and, <laughs> you know, the, the mauler that can't attack unless you play a spell. Big yikes. <laughs> Okay, that being said, as much as we are making jokes and kind of, you know, in a way, disrespecting the, uh, the American team here. Uh, it's not disrespect to the team. It, it, this is just Poco Hopper. This is just bad matchup, yeah. As, as much as we're kind of like, you know, joking around here, um, I'm, we're still waiting to see what this warrior can actually do. You know, like right now... Its game plan is much better suited for the Zoo Warlock we saw, the Odd Paladin that might be there. Aggressive decks. The aggressive decks. But C Team Korea has more decks like this. They got, you know, janky Mechathune Warlock. At least I think so. I don't know if we've seen it, but I heard that there were some discards uh, shenanigans in there. They've, they've got some, uh, some off-the-wall strategies. Right, and they have, you know, other really weird decks. So, like... You know, Europe would be a great opponent for them, perhaps. Korea? All right. Well, this is the final Pogo Hopper right now. So, well, they have Shadow Step. That's the thing, is they're probably in the business of somehow creating more Pogo Hoppers. They actually have... Oh, it's lethal. Yeah. Oh, it is straight up lethal because they have double bio spikes there. Uh, this game is right finally over. I forgot the Pogo Hoppers were 20 <laughs> attack. <laughs> oh, my God. 25 of attack. Oh, oh, some BM flavor, I like. <laughs> All right, well, that was brutal. Dire D in Korea take game number one, and you know what? That rogue is undefeated, Admiral. You may have uh, convinced another one. Granted that uh, it did end up facing up against two really good matchups, like a slow druid in the very beginning of the day, and uh, that was Maligos druid, and then also going up against a warrior. Now, if it was... Let's say Odd Rogue. 